Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and a lesson today where I'm going to show you how to play the fingerstyle intro that John Prine uses in his cover of My Old Kentucky Home, Good Night. So as of the time I'm recording this, he released his version of this a few weeks ago. Uh, it's been in my head, and I've been practicing it. It's been a nice fingerstyle, Travis-picking little sequence. 16 bars. I'm going to show you the 16-bar sequence. This won't be for the entire song. You could basically take the chords I'm showing you and strum or fingerpick if you want to play the full song. But this will more be for that 16-bar Travis picking, finger picking sequence, of course, right? Now, uh, the best way to follow along with this lesson is with the PDF printout I have available through my website. Uh, it's just a great way to use the tabs, but also call out some of the chord shapes and the finger position stuff and some of the just the, the bass note and hammer on stuff. You're going to need to know. So that's available over at playsongnotes.com. Many other lessons are available there as well. Thanks to all you who support me on Patreon and through my tip jar. But with that said, uh, let's get to the lesson. Uh, first up, um, let's look at the chords we're going to need here, okay? So it's only three chords by name, C, F, and G. But there's going to be a few voicings of those chords that we're going to want to know. So we're going to start with our regular C chord, right? Uh, that's one you probably know. But there's a couple other voicings you're going to want to be familiar with, right? One of them is being able to put your left pinky down on this third fret of the second string, right? Now, your index finger will normally be here, right? But we want to be able to put that pinky down and take the pinky off and do it smoothly. And then we want to have all the other fingers, of course, in the C major position and be able to do this, right? Now, we're also going to need to sometimes take our index finger off of the second string. So those three voicings then, the regular C, putting your pinky down, and then taking your index finger off, right? So all that activity is happening on the second string there. Okay, that's the C. Um, now for the F, this is the trickiest part of this song for me. Now this F, um, you know, instead of doing a full six string F bar chord, what we're gonna do is um, an F where we're gonna, and I'm sort of playing this as I'm, I'm pretty 99% sure this is what John Prine's doing, is he's basically, he's not doing the full bar like this, right? He's basically playing the thickest string by taking his thumb and sort of, you know, rolling it backwards and sideways to get that first fret on the low E string, right? Open low E string, first fret. Right, now if I was to push it down, you get that same note, right? But the idea is with your thumb, if you can manage this, the benefit is, is you have these other fingers up here and they're not, the index finger isn't doing the bar and that way you also can, on the third string, you can sort of hammer on that uh, middle finger. And that's gonna be the trick I'm gonna show you in a bit is um, how to do that. So uh, basically from thickest to thinnest though, we wanna have our, our uh, thumb pushing down the low E string on the first fret. We're not gonna play the fifth string ever. The next note we'll play is the fourth string with our ring finger, our left ring finger, and then our left middle finger on the second fret of the third string, so. Right? That's the sixth, fourth, and third string. And this is a good thing to practice just first, you know, get these three notes uh, going well. And then we're gonna bring in the index finger. Now, our ultimate goal is to basically bar the thinnest two strings on the first fret with our index finger. This is super tough though. So what I would recommend starting off is just doing the first fret on the second string. Right? And then put your middle and ring fingers down. Get the second, third, and fourth string. Good. Add that thumb if you can. Right? So sixth string, fourth string, third string, second string. And then, so if you can get this, you can play most of this song, right? But for full credit, what you want to do is push your um, index finger down. And I couldn't, it took me a few days of practicing this song before I could do this. I think my hand just had to really 
get over the hump of like, are you serious? Do you really want me to do this? You know? And at first it was like impossible. Then it was like half impossible. And then I was able to kind of do it. Even right now, I find it kind of tough to do when I'm just sort of um, in this sort of uh, forced context. But when I'm playing, I'm kind of used to doing it in the context of playing, right? So it, it works out, but this is what it will sound like. This is the ideal state. It's first fret on the sixth string, and on the fourth string going third fret, second fret, and then first fret, first fret. Okay, so this is a tough chord, hardest part of the song in my opinion, but this is the F we're gonna be using. Okay, now the G, uh, a lot easier. Basically just a uh, left ring finger on the third fret of the low E string, and then a couple things here. Um, usually we're gonna have our uh, pinky on the third fret of the second string. Okay, we're not ever gonna play the fifth string, so uh, sixth string, fourth, third, second string. Right? Sometimes though, we're gonna wanna take our pinky off and have our left index finger on that first fret of the second string, right? But be able to put your pinky on and off. Sometimes you want to take your index finger off as well. So what you'll notice is that with the C and the G, and with the, that's the C and this is the G, notice how basically that traveling melody note is, is the same on both those chords, right? And then the F, um, that you're not taking off your index finger on the F, but that, that's part of it too. So that's going to come into the melody notes that we're going to need throughout this song. So those are the chords you're going to need, right? Get comfortable with those three chords, but also the voicings and the little modifications that you'll need for each chord. Because next we're going to bring in the finger style with the right hand over here, you know, with the strings. And your, your left hand has to know those chords, you know, and know those positions. Because as we bring in the, the melody and the, the individual finger, finger pluck and stuff, it gets tougher, right? But um, let's look at next the, the sort of thumb motion that's going to be a staple of this sort of style, right? Um, this is, uh, as I understand, it's called Travis picking. Basically, um, the, the technique is sort of characterized by your, your right thumb is going to be alternating bass notes. So for the C, you know, this is the C chord, right? But our right thumb is going to be in charge of the fifth and fourth strings, right? So fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth. Get a nice steady count going if you need to work on your rhythm, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Try to play nice and steady, then go to F. talking about frets, right? But sixth string, fourth string. So for the F, we're going from the low E string to the fourth string, right? So sixth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. And then the G is going to be sixth string, fourth string as well. And then back to the C. So uh, the, the real difference here is in the C, where our home string is the fifth string, right? We're always going to the fourth string, second and fourth, right? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's good to, when you're working on this with just your thumb, try per switching the chords if you can. And don't worry about switching them in any one specific pattern yet. Just sort of go through them, right? So uh, real quick, I'll do the C, two, three, four, C, two, then let's go to F. And one more time on F, and then let's go to G. And uh, this is actually a one way you could play the song if you wanted to, all right? Put the song on in the background and then just play along, get the chord sheet, um, or follow along with the progression. And you could sort of sing along over just your thumb if you wanted. It's going to sound a little bit not too full, and that's okay. But it's a good way to practice and get your thumb knowing what it needs to do. Because, of course, in a minute we're going to add the um, right index and middle fingers, and it's going to be a lot tougher, right? So your thumb has to know what it's doing. Your chord hand up here, your left hand needs to know what it's doing, too. Now one thing before we get to the melody stuff that I want to call out is some of the hammer-on stuff we're going to be doing with our, um, technically it's with our left hand up here. So if we take this C bass note pattern we're used to doing here, and what we want to do is the first time we pluck that third fret, we want to go from open fifth string to third fret fifth string but we're only going to pluck once we're going to pluck it open and then hammer it on right so pluck it open and 
hammer it on. I'm being dramatic there, but the idea of the hammer on is our, our thumb, our right thumb. Our right thumb is not doing the hammer on. That's all the left uh, ring finger, okay? So, and you want to keep a good count when you're doing this. So if we go a one, two, three, four, one, We're also going to need it with the F, and this is tricky, but the idea here is we're going to pinch uh, third string and sixth string, right? But we're going to pinch that third string open, right? And then we're on the, the and count, one end, one end. We're going to hammer on our left middle finger on that third string to the second fret. time one and two three four 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 now um, you're only gonna need this at a few parts of the song and you could totally skip this hammer on and you'd be totally fine right John Prine does it and it was a nice little challenge I wanted to sort of uh, give myself the challenge of working out so I wanted to show you that technique now because once we get to the next part um, you know, I don't want to have to introduce that concept, right? Okay, so now we know the chords, we know the modifications of the chords, and we also know that these hammer-ons are going to come sometimes. So now let's look at the full uh, sequence here. Now the thing about this is, um, I'm not really going to go through measure by measure, because it's 16 measures, a lot of them repeat. Some of them are a lot simpler than others, right? I think that if, if there's one thing I, I want to teach with this video and all my videos, it's like teach you how to learn this stuff, um, you know, based on only having partial information, right? Whether it's it's part of a video or part of a PDF or whatever, because you're not always gonna have a teacher there to walk you through everything, right? So, and I will walk through a lot of this stuff, but big picture, the idea is you take these 16 measures and you'll break it into phrases, okay? So I would look at these um, first two measures as one little mini phrase of just the C. Then you're gonna wanna work on this third and fourth measure of going to the F and then coming back to the C. And then work on those two um, phrases, those first four measures, get them nice and good and comfortable before you move on, right? And the good part is, is that second uh, four measures is going to be a lot easier, in my opinion, because you're repeating the C, you've already done that, then you're going to the G, which is a bit more straightforward, right? And then the good news is that third line is basically a repetition of the first line. So you already have that under control. And then the final line is uh, more of the C and the G and back to the C. It's a little bit different, but again, you want to just um, put these into compartments, work on each compartment at a time, get comfortable with it. Don't try to just play the whole 16 measures through from beginning to end at first, if you're messing up especially, because it's just going to make it really difficult on yourself. You're not going to be able to like focus on the, the individual challenges that you're having, right? And what you want to do is like, you know, get that first transition from the C to the F, get that good. Um, work on it, practice it, make that your goal for one day or one practice session. The next day you come, maybe you can refine that one, but then introduce yourself to the second line, you know, and then you kind of repeat that process, right? Don't feel like you have to do it all in one day. So I just want to call that out, right? But um, let's look at this first line um, from beginning to end here. This gives a good, this is probably the hardest part, this, this F especially. So one thing you might want to do is if you get the PDF especially, I recommend printing it out if you can. And if uh, it's helpful to get a highlighter or some kind of, um, if this helps for you, if you're a visual learner, but you want to understand that the, the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings are all the domain of your right thumb. So if we look at just the first four measures, right, we're going to be going from the C to C to F and back to C, right? So I just did the whole thing there. What's new here is one thing is on that C, the second measure of the C, we're actually going to bounce, and I say bounce, we're gonna, that final three and four count, we're gonna play the third fret on the fifth string twice in a row, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? And that what that does is it kinda creates a nice little um, repetition before you change to the F, which makes that change a bit more dramatic, right? So um, get that thumb, under control, then you want to bring in your right index finger and middle finger, right? And get that melody. So that's the first two measures, right? 
the index finger by itself, your right index finger. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That's all your that's all your right index finger is gonna do. Then you just combine that with your right thumb, right? And take it one measure at a time if you need to. So that's the first measure and the first note of the second measure. I'm just going to play that over and over again. Right? So you can think of this as a phrase, right? This first measure. So when you get good at that, for that final three and four count, you're going to three count and four count. The second measure, right? So let's play into it. And repeat it. And if you can, this is a little thing, it sounds like John Prime's doing very subtly, is when you play that three count and then the four count, you almost, if you can silence your strings by virtue of just lifting up your fingers from uh, the fretboard, but keep them on the strings, right? I'm just depressing them, but I'm still touching the strings. That kills the sound of the ringing strings, and you can do this. It kind of like boom, boom, it's a little bit staccato. Instead of a smooth, elegant phrase, it's like punctuated. And then that kind of, it's like a little bouncy uh, jump into the F. Ooh, that wasn't good. Okay, so that's the second, uh, that's the third and fourth measure. And this is the hardest part for me. Um, so if you're having trouble with it, the third measure here, don't worry about the hammer on it first. Out both hammer ons. <laughs> Habit style hard. That's messing me up. But um, take out the hammer ons when you're first learning it if they're giving you trouble. And then just take it slow and understand that your F is just doing with the thumb, it's the sixth to fourth string twice, and then you're going to the C. Right? And then uh, you can just do the index finger by itself. Right? So that's the, the index finger melody, and you combine that with the thumb. So the first four lines would be... Third line. So that's the, the fifth and sixth measure, which is really the first two measures of the second line here. That's more of the C, and it's pretty uh, straightforward compared to the first two measures we had. Okay, and you can repeat those if you need to get comfortable with it. Then the G. Now the final two notes of that G in the eighth measure are going to be similar to that um, end of the second measure where we're keeping the bass note the same for two counts in a row. And you can kind of do that thing where you kind of silence those strings to give it that percussive effect, right? And then you go back to the C. So the good news is the entire third line is the same as the first line, which is good. Um, and then we go to the final uh, line here. So that first two measures is a C and a G. It's pretty straightforward. And then the final two measures, a little bit tricky. That, that second to last measure is tough because 
They're kind of going from a C to a G. I didn't write it like that, but. On that last note, that three and four count of the second to last measure, you have to play the third fret in the low E string and then take off your, your ring finger to play that four count on the um, low E, on the, on the fifth string there because you want that to, to ring, right? So. Okay, so the fourth line in full is. And that's when you start singing, is that very final measure, if you wanted to sing this song. So that's the entire thing there. Now, um, again, it's um, look for the things that repeat, number one. The first line, the third line, they totally repeat. That's good, right? Um, get used to the just common melody notes uh, that are usually happening on the open high E string, and then third fret, second string, first fret, second string, sometimes open second string. Okay, get used to that. And then just, you want to get your right thumb just used to doing that thing it's doing. And you can kind of make up melodies using these building blocks. I'm just on C here. Going to G. Back to C. That's a good way to get comfortable with things before you want to burden yourself by learning the exact tab that he's playing. And that F chord, of course, toughest part of the song for, uh, for me personally. Hopefully you have better luck with it, but give it time. It took me a few days even before I felt halfway comfortable. So uh, this is not going to come overnight, um, at least if you're me. So um, yeah, I hope this is helpful for you. Thanks all for watching this far. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, any other requests you might have for other John Prine songs or uh, anything of this style. I'm uh, always finding myself drawn to these finger style Travis picking uh, songs, trying to learn one a month or so, just because it's, it's very entertaining and not entertaining, but it's satisfying for me as a guitarist to learn and really wrap my head around this. It takes a few days and a few weeks sometimes I get comfortable with these, but it's really rewarding. So I hope you're uh, appreciating these, uh, these songs. And uh, thanks to all you again who are supporting me on Patreon. It really means so much. And uh, likewise, those of you who are supporting me through the tip jar. So um, I'm going to take off now. But thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a great night. Bye-bye.